Hi, this is Simon Obstel and welcome to another tutorial for Resolve Fusion. Now, in my first Custom Vertex tutorial, I showed you the basic theory behind the numbers. In the most recent one, we looked at creating a simple model. This time, we're going to look at some advanced modeling techniques to create this complex looking object. So let's get started. So in my last tutorial on Custom Vertex, I explained that what we were doing with modeling with the Custom Vertex tool is not at all dissimilar to what we're doing when we use the 3D displacement tool, but there are significant differences. To start this tutorial, I just want to use the displacement tool just to show you some basic things that are going to be useful for our understanding later on. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add a 3D shape, switch it to cube, and then I'm going to add a 3D displace, and then I'm going to add a background. I'm going to set this to square. So I'm going to go for 1024 by 1024 and add a rectangular mask to it. So we've got that. Set that background color to red. And then let's look at our displacement tool. Let's pipe our masked background into the displace. And you can see what's happening is we've got displacement on all four sides. And if we soften that off, we can soften off the result. And depending on the number of subdivisions, obviously the sharper this is going to be. So I'm actually going to set that to 48 for the time being. What we can also do, if we don't want this extrusion on all six surfaces of the shape, to the shape, we can add a UV map tool. You can see immediately that's different because the default is planar. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit fit, which is important because you, the default was two by two. Fit makes it fit the cube at one by one. And now you'll see we've actually only got displacement of the top and the bottom based on the fact that we've got the Y orientation for the planar mapping. And if I switch to X, you can see we've got it mapped on X and Z similarly. So, we are going to be doing something very similar to this, but with the custom vertex tool instead. And the purposes of that will be that we can control exactly where the displacement is happening much more effectively than we can using the displace tool. So I'm just going to delete that displace tool. Instead of that displace, I'm going to add a custom vertex tool. So the UV map is going into that. We also need to pipe the background into the image one input. And then you'll remember from my last tutorial that what we need to do is we need to access the values of this input image. And we can do that over here in the intermediate tab. I'm going to type get r1w open brackets tu comma tv close brackets. And please refer back to my previous tutorial for an explanation of that expression. I've used w for a very particular purpose here, and I'll show you why in a second. So then we need to add an expression to the X position. So if open brackets PX is greater than 0.45 comma PX plus I1 comma PX close brackets. And for a full explanation of that expression, please refer to my first tutorial on custom vertex and the most recent one. And if we look at that, it doesn't look like much of anything at all. And that's because our axis is wrong and we need to switch the orientation to X. And now I think you can see that we've actually got an extrusion on the right here. It doesn't look quite right, does it? You can see that somehow or other things are not quite what they ought to be. And that's because we need to add a replace normals node after the custom vertex. And now that's actually looking as we would like it to look. So if that extrusion is too much, we can come to the red value and just dial it back. Or if I just set that back to one, we could come into the mask and we could adjust the level. So I'm going to set that to 0.2 and you can see we've reduced the height of the extrusion. So we can use either of those controls. So I just want to point out something that we are able to do with the custom vertex tool that we weren't actually able to do with the 3D displace. You'll notice for, for a start, we've actually got an extrusion just on one side, which is obviously much more manageable than having it on both. What we can also do is come into the UV map tool 
And what we can do is we can come into tile and we can actually change the U and V tiles. So if we go for three and three, you can see we've actually got six studs. And that's something you can't actually do with the 3D Displace tool. You can't actually use the tiling, but we can do tiling because in our setup here, we had W, which basically wraps the input image if there isn't enough of it to go around. And that will create this nice tiling effect. If I switch it to B, you'll see we've got a single stud like that. If I switch to D, probably nothing happens, but actually what it's doing is it's duplicating the edge pixels. I think I'm going to just stick with D uh, for the purposes of this tutorial, but that's a, just a little trick that I wanted to show you that's actually quite fun. Just need to come back to my UV map tool and just reset that tile because we won't be actually doing any tiling for the purposes of this tutorial. I'll leave the orientation set to X. So first of all, let's just work on this right hand side of the cube. What I'm going to do is come back to my rectangle here and just resize it a bit. So I want to create some vents. And what I'm going to do is make the height 0.9 and the width, let's go for 0 0.02. And let's just back off on that level a bit again. So let's go for 0.1. Now, this is not a vent because it's going the wrong way. So what we actually need to do is come into our custom vertex here come to the expression, and instead of adding that offset value, we need to subtract it. And now you'll see that we've actually got a slit. So what I'm gonna do is duplicate this. After that background node, I'm going to add a duplicate node like that. Let's just go with five copies for now. And with the duplicate tool selected in the viewer over here, I can interactively drag that control until I get the gap that I want between those slits. And then we can choose the number of slits we want. Let's just go with eight. So now I want to add something here over on the left. So what I need to do is actually just m create a copy of this background node and I'm gonna merge it in there like that. It goes horribly wrong initially. But then if we add in another rectangle mask like that, it's looking a bit better. And then I'm gonna come over to this rectangle mask tool. Let's move it across a bit like this. Let's reduce the width, increase the height. So it's much too deep. So let's go for something like 0 0.05 for the level. And let's maybe just give it a little bit of a soft edge. So let's go for 0 0.025. Let's maybe even reduce that level down to 0 0.2. So just so you can visualize what's happening a little bit better, I'm going to drop in a bitmap node, not over there, in here just after that merge. I'm going to switch it to red and just look at the result. And over here, you can see that this image is basically creating the cutouts for the right hand face there. I'm not actually going to use that bitmap node. It's not actually needed. It's just drop that in there so you can visualize what's happening. Now you'll also notice that it's all a little bit rough and that's because we don't yet have enough subdivisions, but we're going to fix that at the end. So this is our right hand side. What we're now going to do is focus on the other side. We can just copy and paste this custom vertex tool, create a new one. I'm going to grab that background node again and copy it and add it to the image input of the custom vertex tool. Again, we need to add some masks to it. So let's just look at it over here. First thing I'm going to do is add a rectangle. I'm going to set the height to 0.9 and I'm also going to add a, an ellipse and set the width and height of that to 0.9 as well. Then I want to tweak the width and position of this rectangle. So position, I'm going to go for 0.275 on X and the width I'm going to set to 0.45. You can see that that edge is still in the center, so we're getting a nice a smooth shape here. So then we need to fix the expression. Obviously, we were targeting with this expression, we were targeting the right hand side. So any values that were greater than 0.45, we actually need to go the opposite way. So we need to go less than negative 0.45. And you can see we've got a result now, but 
it's not the result we want because we actually want this to be an indentation. So instead of subtracting, we will add I1. And now you can see we've got this major indentation there. So that's all much too much. So we can come into the red value and let's go for maybe 0 0.03 for that indentation. Now it's all looking a bit rough and there are a couple of reasons for that. We don't yet have enough subdivisions to make this smooth, but also we haven't smoothed off our two shapes. So what we can do is after that background node is add a blur and we can just increase that blur and 20 is probably enough. What I'm also going to do is just cut a little notch in it. So after that ellipse, let's add another rectangle. Let's set its paint mode to subtract. Let's move that over to here and set that height to something like 0.1. And then we can adjust that position to taste. So I think that's our left hand side done. And again, that was really pretty easy to do. So now I want us to target the back and to do that, we're going to have to change directions because so far we've been using the X axis. So what we need is a new UV map tool. So let's add one in here. We also need to set it to fit. So we don't want Y, we want Z because we want the back. Let's also copy that custom vertex tool and paste that in after that. So I'm just going to do a quick bit of tidy up. It's going to grab that background tool, paste it because we're going to need that. And then I'm going to take all of these and group them. Call that right. Take all of this and group them. And let's call that left. So that's a bit easier for you to understand what's going on. So we've got our UV map tool pointing the right way. We've got it to fit. We've got our custom vertex tool. The expression is in the wrong field. So I'm going to cut it and paste it into the Z position. And I'm going to set the X back to PX. So in this case, we just need to modify this expression. So everything that is X needs to be Z. Let's change the X's to Z's. And we also need to think about the face that we're targeting. And actually this is correct because we want the vertices that are less than 0.45. So. First of all, I'm going to add this background tool again to the image one input. And I also want to add a rectangle mask to it. So again, I want to have this go the other way. So I'm going to change that plus sign there to a negative. So this is extruding outwards. And let's just increase the size of that rectangle. Let's go for something like 0.9 by 0.9. And let's round those corners a bit. And we also need to soften that off. So let's go for something like 0 0.04. And then let's also add in an ellipse. Then we need to come into our background tool. We need to increase this red value. Let's actually just go for one. And then what we need to do is adjust these levels. So I'm going to set the level for the rectangle down to 0 0.05 and the level for the ellipse down to 0 0.075. And I'm going to set that soft edge to 0 0.04 as well. So now we've got that, that fairly nice modeling on the back as well. And that was, that was again, really easy. So let's now target the front and I want to get a little bit fancier here. So again, we can copy this custom vertex and paste it in after the previous one. UV map tool is fine because we're still on the Z axis. Let's copy that background paste it and let's tidy this one up and call it back. So what I want to do with this new custom vertex tool is I want to create an outward curve. So I'm going to add a rectangle tool to my background. I'm going to pipe the background into the custom vertex image one input. So we need to reconfigure our expression. So we're targeting the front face. So that's greater than 0.45 and we want to swap that negative sign for a positive sign. So now we've got this crazy extrusion there. Let's just set that background amount down to something like 0.15. And with this rectangle, I'm going to set its height to one and its width, I'm going to go crazy and go for two. And then I'm just going to increase that soft edge to 0.5. And hopefully you can see we've now got this really cool rounded extrusion like that. And what it's done is it's kind of helped us with this shape here as well. 
and a little bit with this as well that's kind of more interesting because we've added in that roundness so it's kind of an extra benefit that we've got there so let's add in a little bit more detailing i'm going to copy that background and i'm going to merge it over the top of the other one i want to set the merge alpha gain to zero then i'm going to add a re another rectangle mask to this new background like that i'm going to set its width 2.035 and its height 2.9 and it's created this nice little spine there let's set the amount down to something like 0.2 so let's give it a little bit of softness i'm going to go for 0 0.015 so then i'm going to take this rectangle and i'm going to copy it and make an instance of it immediately afterwards and then i'm going to right click here on the center and de-instance the center position I'm going to set this X value to 0 0.035. Then I'm going to copy and paste this new instance. And I'm just going to do a little calculation on this X value, one minus, and it's given us 0 0.965 without my having to calculate it. So we've got it over on the other side. So we've got some nice extrusion going on here, but I also want some indentation. So I'm going to copy this custom vertex tool and paste it. And all the way here, we'll just swap that plus I1 to a negative, because that's how we create indentation, as I'm sure you know. I'm going to copy that background tool again and then pipe it into the custom vertex image one input. So we're going to, first of all, add an ellipse like so. We're going to set its width and height to 0 0.03. Then let's move it over on X. I think probably we want to be 0 0.125 and then move it up on Y to 0.85. And let's give it some soft edge. So 0 0.025 for the soft edge. Let's now instance this, so create an instance like that, de-instance the center, set this new Y position to 0.65, copy and paste, set this new one to 0.35, copy and paste, set this new one to 0.15. So then I also want to add in a rectangle. I'm going to set its level down to something like 0.2, and let's have a soft edge of 0 0.025. Let's set its width to 0.2, its height to 0.85, and its X center to 0.3. So then I want to mirror this over on the, on the other side. So let's make ourselves a little bit of space here. After that background, I'm going to add a merge. I'm going to merge the background over itself like that. And then I'm simply going to hit the flip switch and then we've got that on both sides. I think I might just reduce the level of this ellipse down to something like 0.4 so it's not too strong. And it's all going to look much smoother once we've upped the subdivisions and we're looking at the final render. The final thing I want to do is I want to add some interest to the top face. So to do that we again need to swap directions. So after this I'm going to add a new UV map tool. This time we do actually want the default of Y. We do want to make sure to fit it, however. Let's also copy this custom vertex tool, paste it in after that. We need to cut that Z position and paste it into the Y. We need to reset the Zs to be Ys. And we need to change this to a plus, I think, because we want an extrusion. And we need to reset that Z position to be PZ. So, for this, we are actually going to reuse something we've already made, which is this here. So let's grab that and pipe it into the image input of this custom vertex here. And you can see now we've got this interesting effect on the roof. And we need to just adjust this value that we're comparing it to. So I think I'm going to go for 0 0.495 and then you see we're not distorting the rest of it too much. And if we think that's a little bit too high, what we can do is we can add an adjuster to this expression here. So P1 plus I1 plus N1. And if we come over to our numbers here, we can just very slightly adjust that N1 value till we've got a slightly better result. So we've actually brought down the height of that roof 
and it's not looking too crazy. So there we go. We've actually got the bulk of our modeling done. The only thing we need to do is add in some lights on the side here. So at the end of our flow, let's add in a new 3D merge and have a look at that. So to this 3D merge, I am going to add a new 3D shape and going to set this shape to sphere. In fact, let's just look at this sphere on its own. And let's also add a 3D shape, which creates a new 3D merge and set this new one to Taurus. Then we've got something that looks like this. I might just up the subdivisions for that Taurus base to something like 60 to just get a smoother result. Then I'm going to add, after this new merge, a 3D transform. Set it up as follows. So something like negative 0.45 on X, 0.2 on Y, and negative 0.145 on Z. And then I'm going to rotate it through 90 degrees on Z, and I'm going to set its scale to 0.05. And now it's probably safe to look back at the original model and see if we've actually got this in the right place. Just need to adjust its Z position. So let's go for negative 0.25. Then after this transform, I'm going to add a duplicate 3D. I'm going to have three copies and set the Y offset to negative 0.2. So let's just give the lights some color. So this is the sphere here. What we're going to do is add a new background node and we're going to pipe it into the sphere. We're going to set the color to be something like this. And then in order to get these lights to cycle, we're going to add a brightness contrast after this. And what we can do is adjust the brightness like this. So we're going to add an expression to the brightness. So right click, add expression. And the expression is going to be sine, open brackets, time, divided by eight, close brackets, times 0.5 minus 0.5. And you'll notice that there, now that's cycling like that. And we need to offset those in time. So I'm going to come into the duplicate and I'm going to set a time offset of, I don't know, something like seven. Is that going to work? Yeah, so we're getting a sort of interesting cycling like that. So then I'm going to add a 3D camera. I'm going to set it up in my normal way. I add an expression to the Z pivot, pick whipping the Z translation, adding a negative sign to the front of that Z pivot. And then I'm going to add a 3D renderer so we can see the output. Just need to move my camera out. So let's go for something like six. Come to the renderer. Let's actually switch to the hardware renderer for this. Makes a lot more sense. And let's switch to float 32. Next, let's add a spotlight. Turn on the lighting shadows for the renderer. I'm just gonna quickly set up that spotlight. So five, one, five, negative seven, and something like 64. So let's come back into our original shape and up the number of subdivisions. Let's go for something like one, two, eight, and that's looking a whole lot better. And let's Rotate the camera just so we can see our handiwork. So the backside is not actually lit, uh, but we're going to approach this a slightly different way. What we're going to do is we're going to add our material to our object that's going to illuminate it. So after this replace normals, I'm going to add a replace material. And I also need to, after it, this is very important, add a new UV map tool because with all that deformation that we've done to our cube, it's now no, no longer really pr properly mapped. So what we're gonna do is switch to cube map and we need to hit fit. And you see it's now fitting itself to our modified object rather than the cube as it used to be. So as I say, we're going to replace the material and I'm going to do that with a reflection shader. So I have brought in this HDRI image. Uh, you can find plenty of HDRI images online. This one I found at Polyhaven, fantastic resource, I'm sure you know. So to this HDRI, I'm going to add a sphere map. I'm going to turn on angular mapping and I'm going to add a reflect. Now by default, the sphere map maps to the wrong input of the reflect. So what we're going to do is we're going to map it to the reflection color material. And then if we take that reflect out into our replace materials and look at the result, what we're going to do is we're going to turn up the face on strength till it's almost the same as the glancing strength. 
Uh, for what I also want to do is I want to merge this with another material. So I'm going to bring in a Cook Torrents. I'm going to add a material merge after the reflect. I'm going to add the Cook Torrents to the material merge. And just let's adjust the material merge amount to something like this. But let's set the Cook Torrents diffuse color to be really kind of dark gray like that. So you'll notice we've got quite a bit of aliasing going on here and we can actually come into the renderer and anti-aliasing, open up the anti-aliasing presets. And if we increase this low Q rate to something like seven, that's helped quite a bit. So the other thing I want to do is I want to ungroup my lights, which I grouped before. And I want to add the new material to the torus. So this is the torus down here. Take the output of the material merge into there. And now the rings of the lights are have got that same shiny material. And I also want to come to the sphere or rather the light bulb, its material, and I want to turn off lighting and shadows. And you'll see now we've actually got the lights lighting up. If the lighting is on, they're not working, but this way we're getting the nice lights fully self-illuminated like that. So we need a floor. So I'm going to bring in a new 3D shape. But I'm going to pipe it into the main merge like this. Let's rotate it through negative 90 on X and let's scale it up to 50. And we also need to just bring it down negative 0.5 on Y. We've got a shadow from our spotlight. We'll want to probably just adjust that spotlight so adjust the penumbra angle quite a bit like that. So it's smoother, come into the shadows, softness, turn that to constant. So the other thing I want to do is take the renderer and merge it over a new black background. I'm just going to push in on my camera a little bit. So let's go for five on that so we can see it a little bit closer. One other thing I want to do with my Cook Torrents is to add a little bit of texture to it. So I'm going to bring in a fast noise going to set the scale to 300. I'm going to pipe it into the Cook Torrents roughness material. And then I don't know whether we can see. Yes, you can see we've got a little bit of sort of texturing in there. So there's loads of other stuff we can do to make this look better. But I think this has been a very long tutorial. It was mainly about the modeling rather than the look. And I think I will leave it at that. So I hope this has been useful to you. Thanks very much indeed for watching. See you again soon.